Hercules and Herculad. <laughs> and Hercula, Herculas. Hercula. Herculas. All right, this is episode 12 of the Horse Lick Review. Guys, how are you? Yep. Joining us today yeah. is Jake and Michael. We're here. All right, what are we doing, man? <laughs> Sam. Let's do some stories. Jake, you go first. All right. Michael's going to be here. This one's from ScienceAlert.com, and it's horrifying. Humans living in cities are slowly losing their ability to digest plants. Western industrialized diets are seriously lacking in fiber, and it may be fundamentally changing the way our guts digest tough plant matter. Even though fruit and vegetables are a key part of the human diet, scientists are just beginning to understand how our body breaks down the most abundant organic compound on Earth. Cellulose, the tough material that lines the cell wall of plants. Hmm. Now a new study by an international team of researchers has discovered previously unknown microbes hiding in the human gut that are capable of breaking down cell cellulose. For decades, it was assumed that cellulose could not be broken down by the human body like it could be in the guts of cows, horses, sheep, or other mammals. Only in 2003 did scientists discover human gut bacteria that could digest these fibers after all. I mean, I can keep going, but y'all have any thoughts on can eat plants? Kind of broccoli scary. alone. It's kind Put of it scary. with the Chinese beef. <laughs> Or well, you're not going to be able to eat it anymore. Yeah. You're not going to be able to process I'm it. I'm still going. You're evolving. Plants are going to be our overlords, dude. They're going to evolve to be our predators. They just made Brussels they're gonna, sprouts they're, good. They're going to be standing right next to the, uh, what, what some other uh, overlords that are supposedly what, coming for us. What, like Lord Humongous, when we all nuke each other out yeah, of Lord existence? Humongous, Lord Humongous. Next to Lord Humongous, and then... Billy Broccoli. And then the reptilians, and... Uh, Comes Billy Broccoli, the sentient stock of broccoli. Yeah, he's leading a How force of. Now you couldn't. <laughs> you can't. Well, actually, no. We'd, we'd be. You die. Actually, we'd be proto if we were. So it's like if we lived, we'd be able to digest them still. So we'd be like. We'd be the first that people yeah. they kill off. That's true. It's just, it's just like eating concrete. They'd come after us. It up and then <laughs> they'd come after us first. Just get backed up and die. Because we can still eat vegetables. Yeah. They just made. They kicked me out of the hospital for that. Because you could eat vegetables. Because I ate vegetables. You just, 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 get out of here. just think about that for a few seconds, apparently. <laughs> no one caught with that. <laughs> they, but yeah, they just made Brussels sprouts better. I've heard that they... Uh, How? Kind of, they re-bread them or something, so they're less bitter and more tasty somehow. <laughs> they add bread less bread. Brussels sprout, they put bread on it. That's how they made it better. <laughs> There's less Brussels sprout in these Brussels sprouts. <laughs> I don't know. They I love Brussels them. sprouts. I do too because it made them little better. tiny cabbages. Yeah, I do like cabbage. But that's because yeah. my peasant DNA stinks up your kitchen. Which one should I go with first? Should I go with the Should I go with the feel good one? Or you? Or you? We want to say any more about that? Is there more to go? Uh, let's I want to be sad. I mean, what is it more science details uh, that we're not going to understand? Or is well, it yeah, we, we can more go scary. Uh, I mean, the word fecal is in one of these paragraphs. So Let's I mean, go for it. Three. What is uh, it? For decades, it was assumed that cellulose could not be broken down by the. Oh, yep, already there. The recent study relied on genes of the same bacterium to search for others like it. The exhaustive analysis used fecal samples to test the gut microbiome of humans from different times and regions. The findings suggest we have more in common with farm animals than we once thought. Of course, we do. Our guts, as it turns out, possess several species of cellulose munching microbes that have evaded our notice until now. One species is strongly associated with un ungulate mammals that chew cud, another with primates, another with humans. All three belong to the genus Ruminocuus, known to already have representatives in healthy and unhealthy human guts, and possess it, possesses genes involved in the digestion of cellulose. In fecal samples from hunter gatherers, rural populations. I was wondering when the fecal was coming. Yeah, that's twice, dude. You promised. You missed it the you first time. Species. You missed it the first time. In ancient humans living between 1,000 and 2,000 years ago, the three types of microbe were abundant. Yet in populations from modern industrialized societies, that same gut, that same gut microbes were conspicuously rare. These findings collectively imply a decline. Of these species in the human gut, likely influenced by the shift toward westernized lifestyles, write the study's Processed authors. weird foods with the replacement it, shit, you know what I mean? Pretty like much. Well, chemicals and... Well, that's some good cook. I'm scared. Well, it's, yeah, well, it says uh, it's possible they're being deprived of the microbes. Uh, 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 yeah, killing all our gut stuff, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. That the microbes are deprived of plant fiber, and their numbers in the gut decreased. Fiber is supposed to make. It still has to be in. It still has to be investigated. No, it's just fibers, not just fiber. There may be potential for intentional like reintroduction of enrichment of these species in the human gut so, uh, through dietary supplements or specialized probiotics. So essentially, what this the bottom of the article says is might have to start taking pills so the pharmaceutical industry can profit off of it. Uh, so now, yeah, uh, so now what will happen is they'll force us to like lose the ability to do it so they can sell us the ability well, yeah, well, to I do mean, what we did naturally. People, I, mean, I mean, health health people in like the, you know, have been saying we need to be taking prebiotics and probiotics because I mean, my mom's been talking about that for years, like how we're killing off our fucking good bacteria in our gut. Oh, yeah. yeah, I should have did that. Last time I took antibiotics. Well, basically our fiber intake's too low is what it's yeah, getting Yeah, that at. too. It's probably okay. a lot of that stuff combined. I was like, I'm going to save money not getting probiotics, and I could well, I'm gonna go, solid for like two But months. that's about all we need to know about that. Now, I'm going to go with a, a, a more feel-good one since you just scared it. The living shit. We know that our, our vegetable overlords are coming. I don't know. Children of the 90s rejoice, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 <laughs> George Bush. I'm not eating broccoli. I'm yes. president. Yes, George Bush. <laughs> that's, 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 did he say that? Yeah, I don't know. He, I don't yes, know. he did. He's like, Which uh, one? He's like, uh, H or George W? Uh, first one. HW? Is that? Yeah. Homework? He said something that was like, uh, uh, my mom used to make me eat broccoli. And now I'm president. I'm not gonna eat it. <laughs> Something like yeah, that. Whatever. Fuck I him. Swear, look at He's up. dead. It don't matter. <laughs> All right. Here's a good one. This is from CNN. Teens chase kidnapping suspects on bikes. And save five year old girl. All right. Two teenage boys are being held as heroes after they chased a car carrying a kidnapped girl on their bicycles. Five year old jo- Jocelyn Rojas was playing in her front yard in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, when she vanished Thursday afternoon. Authorities believe she was abducted by a man who lured her, lured her by offering ice cream. For two hours, neighbors and police scoured the area and asked if anyone had seen her. Uh, Tamar Boggs, 15, and his friend took off on their bicycles to search. About a half mile away, they spotted Jocelyn in a sedan, but the driver was elusive. Every time we'd go down the street, he'd turn back around, and then we'll follow him. Tamar told CNN affiliate, WGAL, two teens chased the alleged kidnapper on their bikes for 15 heart-pounding minutes. The driver apparently knew he was being followed and gave up. He stopped at the end of the hill and let her out, and she ran to me and said that she needed her mom, Tamar said. Jocelyn's relatives and neighbors took turns hugging Tamar. Do what? Uh, it sounds like Sedan could really get a lot of slogans out of this. Sedan, bringing families together. <laughs> sedan, the car of well, failed, was, was, ki- failed kidnapping. It was just a, S- a sedan. Get yeah. those boys but, a Playboy. They well, it doesn't tell what, yeah. actually what kind of car he was in, though. It was just some kind of sedan. Like, it would probably actually be bad for him. Yeah, I'm sure it would. <laughs> Somebody would spin it and be like, this is what kidnappers drive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the new it's the new windowless van. The he's, sedan. <laughs> he's our hero. I That's what his grandmother those. said. A it window- was a white windowless van with a cage in the back. You remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. It was like a and minivan. The cops came. It was like, open it up. Okay. It was just a bunch of junk. Like, oh, what's up? We're not that's not what we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh look, shit. <laughs> they, didn't, work. they didn't catch this guy, apparently. It says police are looking for the suspect. Described as a white male between 50 and 70 years old. Of course it was. <laughs> An old creepy white guy. It's always so. Probably with like a pencil mustache, dude. He was driving a reddish-purple maroon car with a round tail, tail light, with round tail lights. The man was wearing green shoes, green pants, a green, green top hat, and a green suit jacket. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was wearing a green shoes and green pants and a red and white striped shirt. He walked with a limp. <laughs> Riddle me this. In this car, you're not allowed to piss. He's still at large. So that's pretty cool, though, that those teens chased him all over on their bicycles. Yeah. So, so he gave up? Does that mean he was just Playboys like... Playboys for all. Yeah, he earned it. <laughs> he gave up and let the girl go because his kids <laughs> were not oh, yeah. It's not worth it. Ain't worth it to me. I can't do this no more. I gotta go over and take my pills. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I gotta work I mean, for it? Realistically. I gotta go over and take my pills and do my dialysis. 
I ain't got time to run from these little boys and then take you <laughs> home and have time to molest you and then be able to take my pills, do my dialysis, and be oh. to bed by six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Plus, I got a fast for my doctor's appointment. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I got that colon cleanse. <laughs> what you got next? I only drink water. All right, from the AP. Swedish Appeals Court rules Space Rock should stay with the owner of the property where it landed. Damn right. Yeah. That's my meteor. A Swedish, land- <laughs> <laughs> a Swedish landowner won a legal battle Thursday to keep a 14-kilogram, 31-pound meteorite when an appeals court ruled that such rocks should be considered immovable property. Like, quote, immovable property, which probably sounded like, Sporgy, hergy <laughs> well, And part of the land where they are found. If it happened here, they just would have took it. Yeah. Said, Fuck you. Sorry, Fuck you, we stub me in that. It's science. It's... <laughs> it belongs to science. It belongs to science. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> the property on which the meteorite landed contains iron, and the meteorite is made of iron. Therefore, <laughs> quote, it cannot be easily separated from what is usually regarded as immovable property. The Sfei Court of Appeals ruled <laughs> on November 7th, 2020, an iron meteorite fell on a private property in Upland, north of Stockholm. In December of that year, two geologists found it and eventually handed it over to the Swedish Museum of Natural History in the Swedish capital. Swedish news agency TT said the owner of the private land where it was found, Johan Binslestierna von Engström, Appealed a December 22 ruling, 2022 ruling uh, by the Uppsala District That's Court. a real name, too. That ruling gave the rock's finders Andreas Forsberg and Anders Setkvist the right to the stone because the meteorite was not part of the property and was a, and was a movable property without an owner. Oh, hold on. AP did the same thing. So it's being displayed at an Ikea. It was being. Now this guy owns it. It's at an Ikea, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. You have to no. You can assemble your own meteor at IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> they show you how to summon it from space. On Thursday, the appeals court element. said the iron meteorite is made up of substances that are already present in the Earth's surface. Judge Robert Green, that's not a Swedish name, said the meteorites or space rocks should be considered part of immovable property, just like other stones, even though it may be intuitively feel like it's something foreign to the Earth. A Swedish law known as all a man's rotten. Like all man's <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it says. <laughs> May give everyone the freedom to roam freely in Sweden on the condition that nature and the animals are respected. But it does not give anyone the right to take a meteorite from someone else's land, the Svee court said. You know, it's... Uh, oh, hold on. Oh, no, wait. I was thinking of, Nor- I was thinking of Norway. I was like, you were just talking about Sweden, and it was like, we had some listeners... Yeah. Remember I told you like a break, like a one percent or whatever like uh, are from Norway. Yeah, like. hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so they took busy time out of their day burning churches and forming black metal bands to listen to us. That's yeah. awesome. We thank them. We thank you. The finders also had claimed there was an agreement allowing them to take the meteorite. However, the appeals court said there was no evidence of such a deal. It wasn't immediately clear whether the geologist would appeal to Sweden's Supreme Court. Mm. And that's it. That's Well, I'm glad the guy gets to keep his meteor. That's space peanut. That's <laughs> <laughs> space peanut. You think some listeners like uh, listen, like are horse lovers? It's like, oh, they're going to talk about horses. Um, only if they're, uh, that, if they're horse lovers and they were listening because of the name, then they would probably be listening because they are horse lovers who love to lick horses and think they're going to hear the review of the tastes of different horses. <laughs> or the, they And like they see if we the like solid. the same tastes as they like. As they're out there licking horses. And they want to hear the horse licking Brown ass. Brown mares are just <laughs> so chocolatey. No, no, just horses. Did you say mares or bears? Ba- mares. I oh, I thought you said bears. I was like, we're talking about horses here. I, I like the juicy no ass of a Clyde's you, 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 you gotta get down to You gotta get down to the breed, though. You can't just say a mare. What kind? I don't know. I like, ju- I like the juicy ass of a Clyde's <laughs> All right. Oh, the hoof of an Arabian, though. It's very <laughs> earthy. This is from AP as well. And it's more alligator. Last episode, we had alligator news. A Tennessee fisherman reeled in a big one. It turned out to be an alligator. The Kremlins are here. Maynardville, Tennessee. 
A fisherman at a lake in northeast Tennessee caught a surprise at the end of his line when he pulled up a three to four foot long alligator. The dude, hold on, three to four, like, you've got methods of fucking measurement. How, how do you not know if it's three or four feet or anywhere in between? It was it a was child's tra- measuring tape. <laughs> it came with a... Is that what it was? It came right. with a Fisher Price Black and Decker child's toy set. They, measured, tool it set. In, they <laughs> measured it in Buzz Light years. That's how we don't the know. The Tennessee <laughs> Wildlife Resources Agency said their Union County Wildlife Officer Rick Roberts got a call from the angler on Monday describing the unusual catch at Norris Lake. When Roberts arrived, the angler had pinned the alligator to the ground behind its head and told Roberts he caught it on a swim bait. <laughs> Alligators are not native to that part of Tennessee and are considered class one yeah, wildlife well, species. I didn't think they were native to any part of Tennessee. Yeah, <laughs> which are those that are yeah. inherently dangerous to humans and may only be possessed by permitted exhibitors or commercial prop- propagators. <laughs> They're the alligators. If you want to own an alligator, you have to be a commercial propagator. <laughs> have you seen a whole alligator smoked on a grill? I have not. It's so fucking good. I think I've, I've seen it done rotisserie style. <laughs> While the origin of the alligator is unclear, it is evident that it was being illegally held in captivity and possibly released into Norris Lake, Cameron said in an email. Oh, at least it was being held. So, and it, it's just pretty much a... Uh, they're looking for a permanent hold, home, and it's at the zoo currently but they don't normally own alligators at this too so they're they're looking for a home anybody looking for an alligator get you a license become a commercial propagator and you can have your very own three to four foot long alligator we don't know three four (laughs) so be prepared be prepared for four if you can guess what if you can be prepared for four (laughs) feet guess his exact measurements you can own this alligator be better than fucking guessing the goddamn jelly beans in like you know a jar. Jelly. <laughs> How long's this gator? How long is my gator? <laughs> three. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, three to four. Well, son of a bitch, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You guys are go candy. ahead. Go ahead. Take it out. Years. All right, we got Indian YouTuber Elvis Yadavet or Elvis Yadev. Yad. No, let me get this right. Indian <laughs> YouTuber Elvis Yadev arrested for allegedly supplying ve- snake venom as party drug. Yeah, I've heard this. I'd fucking try it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I don't need to hear any more. Well, let me try some. <laughs> like, what, does, it, does it even do anything? I don't know, man. It's probably a scam, probably. but, like, come on, dude. Like, it, you can't tell me, it's like, smoke some of this cobra venom. It's like, yeah, all right, let's try it. I was just thought it was a code name. <laughs> what kind of snake? Oh, uh, well, maybe we'll get there. Elvis Yadvev, who has millions yeah. of followers online and is also reality TV star, there should be an A in that sentence, buddy, is detained for allegedly supplying snake venom to be used as dr- as a drug at raves. We're going to get turned up on this venom, dog. <laughs> Indian YouTuber Elvis Yadvev has been arrested. Yep, yeah, okay, you said that already. The influencer, who has 50 million YouTube subscribers, was detained under the Wildlife Act, according to Indian broadcaster NDTV. A part of... A party he was at in November was raided on the suspicion that snake venom was being used as a drug by partygoers. Again, I, this just sounds like a fucking cool ass party. How me. the hell? Do you know what you did last night? I mean, how? <laughs> you were that... riding the snake, brother. <laughs> they already had laws against doing snake venom. I don't know. It's. it's I don't think it was an Indian law because I don't. It said the, the Wildlife Act, which seems like it would be international. Let's see. Police launched an investigation and questioned five people on suspicion of snake smuggling, who named oh. Yadav as the alleged yeah, organizer of the girl. party. Yeah, it was the smuggling that got him. Parties and snake venom supply. Yadvev, who won an Indian version of Big Brother, Big Bo- which was called Big, He's... B-I-G-G, Boss, O-T-T, Big Boss, denied good. all charges. NDTV reported he said he would fully cooperate with police. Nine snakes, including cobras. Hey, yeah, probably fucking cobra venom. Sick. So foxhounds behind this? Yeah, sounds like, because they don't want us to fucking party. It's like a, it's like drinking a king cobra and mixing it with a venom energy drink. <laughs> yeah. Nine snakes, including cobras, were recovered from the party yeah. along with 20 milliliters of snake venom. What the, the fuck? This dude is so dedicated to the party, dude. Yeah. 
that he's sitting at home just milking snakes. <laughs> That's the guy you want. <laughs> he's just See, sitting like, there just fucking milking and putting their heads in those little, you know, you've seen yeah. Yeah, little, yeah, little jars with this stuff. I want to know, though, man, like, I hope he gets to it. Are you, smoke, are you yeah, smoking yeah, the yeah, shit? Yeah. Or is he putting them in little capsules? What does it do for you? I don't know, man. I I think you put it on a safety pan and you just jab it. <laughs> yeah, you just like, yeah, no, you gotta strike the snake, strike the snake. You gotta jab it in the side of your eye with a, with a, with a safety oh, pan. Man. You gotta get it to the brain. <laughs> Go in between the eyes, straight to the brain. Yeah. You'll see God. No, not that one, not the biblical God. Snake God, man. <laughs> Yada has now been remanded to 14 days of judicial custody, four months after he was first questioned. The Times of India report, 14 <laughs> days of judicial custody. Oh, oh man, that's all he gets for, like, showing everybody snake god? That's a pretty that's sweet deal. Pay. The case came the to light. Parties. The case came to light after a complaint by Animal Welfare Organization. Uh, okay, a complaint by Animal Welfare Organization People for Animals. Alleging Yadev and others were shooting videos with snakes and snake venom, according to India Today. Where's people for venom? India Today. <laughs> according to a 2022 research paper in the Journal of Forensic and Legal Medicine, there have been concerns about the use of snake venom as a drug. Uh, man, this might be a thing. <laughs> use of snake venom can often be seen at rave parties, the study said, noting 13 cases of snake venom being used as, re as a recreational substance we're in just, India. We're just out of the loop. Yeah, we are, dude. I need to fucking go party in India. Woo! In India? Yeah. Road trip. Road trip. Hell yeah, I'm going to drive Let's my car drive across the ocean. to India. <laughs> to get that film. <laughs> Let's drive to India, baby. Okay. And some That's curry. the end of that one. <coughs> Is it illegal to lick toads? No. No? You lick, lick all the toads you want? Lick the toad. <laughs> lick the toad, man. All right, from CBS News, I got here. Pennsylvania man. In Scream costume, it should be Ghostface. It is Ghostface. Uh, accused of killing neighbor with chainsaw and knife. Yeah, again, uh, Ghostface doesn't use a chainsaw. It doesn't matter. It's he was just face. dressed as him. Did he get Pittsburgh. the name wrong? He didn't. He wasn't trying to kill like them. He was just dressed as the guy. I mean, get over yourself. Play the role. Play the role. Pittsburgh, a chainsaw wielding yeah, man in canon. a Scream yeah. costume, is accused of killing his next door neighbor in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania State Police said a news release posted to social media that Leighton Borough Police Department was called to a home in Carbon County on Monday for a reported assault in progress. When officers arrived, they found a 59-year-old man suffering from life, quotes, life-threatening injuries. Did you guess it before the end? From being struck by a, quote, piercing object. According to the news release, the victim was taken to a local hospital, hosp hospital, where he was pronounced dead. <laughs> He's dead, uh, and, and that's it. No, I'm just kidding. Hold on. So he just killed Scream, one guy. Scream fourteen. Or one guy. No, listen. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, Lehigh Valley Where's, Live reported that the victim was identified as 59-year-old Edward Whitehead Jr. The outlet citing court records filed by Pennsylvania State Isn't Police. Went on to report that uh, 30-year-old Zach Russell Moyer was taken into custody and admitted to going to his neighbor's house for the purpose of scaring him. Moyer went to the house with a knife and small battery-powered chainsaw while wearing battery while wearing a mask <laughs> and a black costume. Not even gas. Costume. What a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got to try. Yeah, it died in the middle of killing him. Hold on, hold on. If you Let me just change hold, batteries. Just, just, hold just hold the screen. Three hours. <laughs> Just hold the screen. Let me please. go put this on the charger. Actually, you know what? Keep screaming. Keep, keep screaming. I can't maintain my erection unless you're screaming. <laughs> Said while wearing a mask and a black costume-like garment, it's to, consistent with Was the Scream movie. What? Consistent with the Scream movie character. What? Yep. What? <laughs> what did you say? White. What? I'm. Oh, anyway, uh, the court document obtained. Uh, blah blah blah. He was wearing a Scream costume. Yeah. Ghost face. You Warrior know, told with, police with that he spellings. stabbed his neighbor in the head with a knife. Ah. The outlet reported citing the court records. What, what the fuck? Yeah, you know what? They're right. With, with all the misspellings that we find in these articles, I'm starting to think these aren't reputable sources. <laughs> I'm starting to think people they, <laughs> the they don't care who's writing their articles. Well, it might be AI. For their sites. AI spelling problems. Uh, oh, does it? Yeah. 
That's what you get. Anyway, been, do you think the racial slur he was stabbed for in the head AI with a knife? Be like Arnold's. <laughs> he was. <No! laughs> he was stabbed in the head with a knife and was struck with a chainsaw. Struck with a chainsaw. Struck. Yeah, because it died, so he had to like use it melee. <laughs> He immediately <laughs> told his... He didn't even saw, he just beat him to death. He more, or reportedly told his sister about a week ago that he wanted to kill Ed, the neighbor. Um, uh, he faces a homicide charge, obviously. And he was taken to the Carbon County Prison. His bail was denied. And uh, he has a preliminary hearing scheduled for April 3rd. I ain't giving so you... So he killed one man. He, so his, his story varied because it said earlier that he said he wanted to scare the neighbor. Yeah. But then he went to and death. stabbed him in the head. Then he really got in the role. I guess. I ain't give a ghost face bail. He's like, you like scary movies? <laughs> <laughs> then he put on like one of those how-to VHSs from like Lowe's or something. <laughs> How to operate your battery-powered chainsaw. Don't use it to kill people. <laughs> Never yeah, turns it what, on. What can a battery powered chainsaw cut? Like, what do you mean? Apparently, a man. What the fuck you trying to cut? He hit the guy. He hit him with it. He beat him with it. That's what I was on. Yeah, because he pissed boom, him, boom. probably pissed him off. This piece of shit, I paid a hundred something. I earned twenty dollars for this. <laughs> All right. God damn it, I got it at the Costco. We got uh. for us. Applications open for Antarctica's <laughs> Penguin Post Office with one applicant using tattoos to show her enthusiasm. Oh, the Penguin Post Office in Antarctica is hiring UK residents. Ooh, do tell. And charity manager Katie Shaw really wants to go. Wowie zowie. <laughs> Successful applicants will be, quote, self-motivated, empathetic, and fine with showering once every two weeks. Whoa, watch Whoa. out. Magic the Gathering players have that on lock. <laughs> Smash players. <laughs> like, holy shit, I know some smelly nerds that, are, that have got that. Fuck you, Kate. I'm still in my two-week allotment. <laughs> Give me time. <laughs> The shop in Port Lockroy is the southernmost post office in the world and frequently <laughs> smells like penguin poo. Oh, wow. What's oh. The, what's the, does anybody even know what that smells like? <laughs> I mean, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> I followed them all around with a doggy bag and stuck my nose in the bag. <laughs> I had to smell the Antarctic. Every get busy sniffing or get busy. <laughs> <laughs> get busy sniffing or get busy barfing. Every every year, the Antarctic Heritage Trust is flooded with applications for the jobs. This year, there are three positions on offer, and they are only open to UK residents. As well as processing up to 80,000 letters and postcards a year, staff must run the shop and welcome roughly 18,000 cruise passengers who stop by. Hot diggity. Most of those cruise passengers are Nazis in a secret underground bay. No, that part's not in there. <laughs> Aw. One applicant, charity manager Katie Shaw in Manchester, wants to go so much she has tattooed a geographically accurate map of the Antarctic on one leg and a portrait of explorer Ernest Shackleton on the other. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up... I grew up wanting to be a marine biologist <laughs> working in Antarctica, said Miss Shaw. Academically, that didn't work out, but I always found the wildlife landscape. That was Australian. <laughs> and the exploration there fascinating. The continent is so important to the environment and feels like a place we haven't totally fucked up yet. <laughs> Each year was that it feels really part of yeah, it? it was. <laughs> Each year it feels less and less likely we'll be able to enjoy and appreciate it. Successful applicants need to have a range of skills. Employees have to sort, post, sell stamps, look after the buildings, and run the gift shop. They will have to put up with basic living conditions and be happy with their own company. The application for warns people about hygiene. Quote, we have no running water on the island, so washing facilities are very basic. Water is collected in jerry cans from visiting ships. <laughs> jerry cans? <laughs> it's kind of racist. <laughs> what shit is that? <laughs> Bring that, uh, no rinse. You gotta trust these people in ships, like, they're not peeing in your, like, wash water and shit. 
There are no shower facilities at Port Lockroy, so staff are expected to be comfortable living with these limited washing facilities, yet still keeping high <laughs> hygiene levels high. Wait, Visiting wait. ships... <laughs> wipe your ass with a penguin. <laughs> Visiting ships will offer showers approximately once per week, but when weather conditions are poor, you could go up to two weeks without visitors or a shower. There's no visitors, because you... <laughs> Fucking ass stinks. Yeah. <laughs> nope, nope, don't pull into port. She hasn't showered in <laughs> two hours. The bear can smell it. Why do you think we have a shit bear? To see if she's washed her ass. <laughs> Did the penguin comment on this from Gotham? <laughs> yeah, it was... Uh, uh, let me see. Hold on. Checking notes. It was... <laughs> <laughs> Staff, <laughs> Staff also need to count the roughly... 1,500 Gen 2 penguins that live in a colony at Port Lockroy. That's how you go to sleep, just counting penguins. <laughs> Holidays to the Antarctic are expensive. Miss Shaw estimates it would cost more than her annual mortgage payment to go on a two-week cruise to the region. There are also concerns Antarctica's growing tourism industry is damaging the delicate ecosystem. Her annual mortgage payment? Yeah. So the entire... Oh, wait, I forgot. They don't live in America. I, oh, I just assumed it was, like, the sum total of the 12 months. Or, I don't know, maybe they don't pay monthly. She just, this, this just said to go on a cruise there, right? Yeah, so, like, just as, much as, as much as her house costs. So her already. annual payment is probably what our monthly payment is here. Fuck, I mean. Just... <laughs> because it's America. Yeah. It's America. Now I'm sad. <laughs> now I'm real sad. I'm real sad just sitting here thinking voice about it. On. <laughs> Let me put that voice back on. Maybe that'll cheer me up. Antarctic tourists are even causing penguin species to change their reproductive and social behaviors. Guess they don't want to fuck in front of tourists. Is that a cool, according? Go ahead. Could you get a room, please. Yeah. We'd appreciate it. Could you please not fuck? My five-year-old is right here, <laughs> and he doesn't need to see what appears to be two well-dressed birds humping each other. Came here for the glacier. I don't see penguins fucking. <laughs> According to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, because I stopped in the middle of a sentence, that makes the post office <laughs> position even more attractive for applicants. There's a... Oh, oh back to Miss Shaw. There's only three ways you can really visit Antarctica. Working on a research base, elite tourism, or lying for the f post office, said Miss Shaw. Applications close on the mar on. March 18th for the season starting from November and ending in March 2025. There's four ways. B Metallica. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, did they go to Antarctica? Yeah, they, they filmed a whole, like, fucking concert there for no reason. Oh. And then released it to movie theaters. The whole audience was painting. Because they had that much money just to blow. <laughs> also, penguins are metal as fuck. Penguins are metal! All right, I have this one. I don't know. I read about all this. the penguins said. You guys, you guys haven't been good since like 1989. Exactly. Tell them. Uh, I don't want it. Cliff's not here. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> one penguin was close to shouting. The best part of Metallica was crushed under a bus. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> all right, I got one from PCGamer.com. Me and Michael were actually talking about this earlier today. Tekken director. Asks why Americans want Waffle House to be a stage in Tekken 8. The hardest time. He seriously was asking. He wanted to know the reason why so many people were asking why. <laughs> Obviously. You ever been to Waffle House? It is so that the combatants can sit down for a nice waffle and a cup of coffee. Sure. Now, Katsuhiro Harada. Needs to go I mean, to a fucking Waffle House, apparently. Yeah, yeah Katsuhiro Harada is a lifelong... Is, Lifelong creating of fighting games, serving as director on the Tekken series since Tekken 3 and right up to the recent Tekken 8. I'm pretty sure he was around before Tekken 3, but I don't know. Anyway, he, uh, Harada often has a lot of interesting or helpful stuff to say on social media, media and is quite responsive to fans, which means people often reach out consistently with ideas, concepts, memes, and downright jokes. Uh, recently, Harada has been getting one request for a new Tekken stage, the American Southeast's 24 hour a day, seven day a week diner Waffle House. Uh, Harada said on Twitter, Okay, I will only ask once about this request. Why did you, some communities, send me requests for Waffle House? Please what be is sure. A Waffle House? 
Please be sure to explain the basis for the request, including the original story, history, and background. I look forward to an ex- forward to an explanation for some from someone who knows more. Somebody just needs to start sending this dude videos of Waffle House fights. <laughs> well, that's what people started telling him. He said, "Why do people want Waffle House, Mr. Harada? Because the place has become something of an internet meme for its status as somewhere that's pretty dang cheap." Open 24 hours a day and therefore a place where drunk and high people get into fights. Smothered. <laughs> fights with each other, place. with employees, <laughs> with themselves. Not that I condone this, of course, but you can find any number of internet fight videos set in a Waffle House. This has been true for years, and as a bona fide American Southerner, I haven't ever seen a fist fight in a Waffle House, but I know a dozen people who have seen some kind of conflict. Though mostly folks keep it to the parking lot if something's going to pop off. So... He did respond. I saw his response outside of this article, and he said something like, um, uh, okay, and he's like, I get it. And then he was like, but it also has to do with getting permission from the company. If they don't uh, you know, allow us to use it, licensing, we can cannot do it. But somebody uh, responded to him saying, you get Negan, you get Waffle he was House. like, what you do is, is the fight starts inside and then you do a wall break through the windows <laughs> or the walls and you fight in the parking lot. He said, and the person said, I guarantee it, it would be your highest selling stage ever if they sold it like as an extra stage. Yeah, <laughs> I saw this one video. I'd pay, I'd pay tens of dollars for that. <laughs> tens. I saw this one video where uh, it was a real Waffle House and people go in and... It was an employee of the month. It locker. was a real Waffle House? It, it said Waffle House. They went it wasn't a fake one? I'm just fucking with <laughs> it. It made a hell of a model then. Go inside. There's a placard. An employee of the month. And he's wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> Which, where is that Waffle House? I don't know. It was a video. I don't know. It's real. Let's watch. I don't know how to pull it up. Damn it! It's a random algorithm. A random algorithm. That's my next hit. <laughs> Let me get that random algorithm. <laughs> All right, hit it. What do you got next? Hit it. Hit From it, Scott. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. <laughs> hit it, say, say. Wing. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're not talking about cats and what they may or may not have dragged in somewhere. We're talking about rats! Yes. <laughs> They're high! Rats eat marijuana from police evidence room. Rat droppings have been found on officers' desks in the New Orleans police headquarters, which have been taken over by mold and cockroaches, according to the department. Rats that managed to get into an evidence room at a decaying police headquarters building have been eating confiscated marijuana, the New Orleans police chief has said. The aging offices of the police department in New Orleans are so dilapidated and vermin-infested that the animals managed to get into the evidence lockup room, according to police superintendent Ann Kirkpatrick, who, if this is her, looks like she controls the rats, much like Willard. Hmm. I got into my garage (laughs) now. The uncleanliness in the building is off the charts, she added. Rat droppings have been found on officers' desks, Miss Kirkpatrick said, adding that the building where the department has been based since 1968 has been taken over by mold and cockroaches. Ron Harrison, global technical director for Orkin Pest Control, said he hasn't heard of rats eating marijuana before. Never, never, never seen that. <laughs> the Orkin man doesn't know what to do. What do I do? <laughs> Smoke it with him? <laughs> That's what I'd do. That's what I'd do. Uh, yeah, me too. That'd be pretty sweet. So tell me about your four turtle kids. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what, you can stay here if you teach me martial arts. As to what they go through when they when they do, he told the Associated Press that they may experience the same effects as humans depending on what form it was in. Actually, it's probably they're tiny, man. It's probably a lot. They're probably getting ripped. Seeing the moon. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, do you see this confiscated dollar bill, man? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> like, people exchange this for, like, cheese and stuff, dude. Cheese? Holy shit. Bro. Oh, man, the Rat King's not a legend, dude. I've seen one, man. Like a thousand of us tied together by the tail, man. Plays the rip. <laughs> Plays the whistle. What was it? A flute? <laughs> ah, oh, dude, I saw one fight a giant puppet toy man at one point. <laughs> 
many people experience a sense of relaxation. <laughs> I like just going back into the article. And euphoria from the drug as well as altered senses. Yeah, tell me how, yeah, tell me what being high feels like. I need to know. <laughs> According to the National Institute on Drug Abuse, from understanding the biology of the rat and how it's somewhat similar to us, I would think based on the amount of co or concentration that they take in, it would be somewhat similar to what humans experience, <laughs> Mr. Harrison said. So fucking rad fucking is what I'm awesome. hearing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So these these are probably the chillest fucking rats. Rebel rats. Miss Kirkpatrick said that the working conditions in the headquarters mean demoralized staff have to cope with broken air conditioning and lifts and potential recruits are put off coming for interviews. <laughs> I wanted to be a cop and violate people's rights. Then I saw all those stoned fucking rats. And they broke through the vending machine so all the cookies and chips. <laughs> I'm here for the donut benefits, and all these fucking stoner rats are eating the Krispy Kreme. Yeah, man. Everyone knows Frank City. Nah, that's just my New Orleans impression. Sorry, New Orleans. <laughs> so you like to see homos naked? I see rat stone. <laughs> However, she praised the department's office cleaning staff who deserve an award for trying to clean what is uncleanable. <laughs> clean this shit. <laughs> Finding new premises for the nine ten offices has been more of her has been one of her priorities since becoming chief in October. She said, "Counselors are considering a proposal to spend seven point six million dollars on a ten year lease to temporarily relocate the police headquarters to a pair of floors in the high rise buildings in the city's downtown area." Wow! And yep, that's it. Good time. All right, I have one more. I got two. This is from the New York Post, and it kind of goes with that. It kind of can go in tandem with your. Uh... Oh, is this about big, big city New York rats? No, 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 no. With your uh, vegetable thing. Oh, okay. Something kind of like. Oh, it makes oh, you think. Badass Billy Broccoli is going to have a fucking uh, partner in crime. It's Brother. about the. It's this chick. He says, "I am allergic to everything. Eating rice bread or mustard could kill me." You're weak. <laughs> Any meal could be her last supper. If Get she her out of the bloodline. <laughs> a Massachusetts woman suffers from a rare chronic illness that makes her allergic to nearly everything. Eating, even eating everyday food like rice, bread, or mustard could kill her. I am at the point where my diet is only. No, you, you gotta read it like you're from Boston. Uh, br I get into my car. She's drinking br uh, one of her. Uh, are the <laughs> what happened to her? French is. <laughs> what Frenches? Frenches. <laughs> yeah, Frenches oh, I'm at the point where my diet is only L Care, a brand of baby baby formula and oatmeal. Carolyn Cray, 24, told Southwest it's News. It's wicked depressing. <laughs> the Boston resident specifically. Oh, see, she was from Boston. Look, from dude, the mast, a mast cell activation syndrome. What a rare. Immunological, immunological, immunological di disorder in which a person experiences repeated severe allergy symptoms affecting several body systems. It's wicked harsh on the immune system. <laughs> the healthcare recruiter's list of potential allergy triggers is a mile long and includes fish, peanuts, sesame, kiwis, kiwis, and mustard, as well as black mold and cat or dog fur. Well, I mean, isn't everybody technically allergic to black black mold? Yeah, I think it's just toxic oh, in no. general. Uh, no, eating the wrong Michael thing. Eats it. Eat it. Mikey likes it. It's kind of like a trouble. <laughs> <laughs> eating the wrong thing could induce anaphylactic shock, a potentially deadly allergic reaction. No shit. It is really tough. You don't think about food at all when you can eat normally, lamented Cray, who has to bring her own meals and drinks whenever she dines out. So you're not really dining out. <laughs> yeah, well, you just go visit. You're hanging out. In the like, yeah, man, that really does suck because she looks like the biggest asshole. What does she eat? Hot dogs? No, I said <laughs> she was eating. She was eating. Her diet consists mainly of some kind of baby formula and oatmeal. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't pay attention to her. Yeah. <laughs> There's a picture of her holding her Quaker oats and her Elkhair Jr. Uh, you see the Quaker there on the box? Well, I'm related. I don't really have to read anymore. It's like, you know, she's got this and she can't eat shit. 
So everybody's fucking can't eat. You know, I'm not going to be able to digest vegetables. We got people over here getting, being allergic to everything but baby formula and oatmeal. We're de-evolving. Oh, man. Maybe <laughs> Billy Broccoli, like, would be her cure. Maybe, like, Billy Broccoli produces broccoli milk. Billy Feed her really from his, broccoli? From his broccoli teats. Hey, the king broccoli. of all broccoli and the soldiers of the future. <laughs> <laughs> Feast of my body. <laughs> Eat of me. He's got <laughs> broccoli nips all over him, and there's all these little broccoli babies suckling. He's holding his. I need a broccoli baby. Oh, do you his like that? His broccoli nips. His daddy's. I lactate vegan cheese. Do you like that? <laughs> Taste my broccoli juice. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> We'd be able to suckle. At, the, at his teeth. Yeah, because we're fucking pro, we're proto humans. Kind of broccoli man. <laughs> we're throwback men in this nuclear apocalyptic future. <laughs> what do you got next? Oh, fuck. I'm not talking any more about that. This <laughs> <laughs> is because I'm rock hard. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. What do you want to hear? Uh, yeah, I guess it's, just go to it's, one. It's going to pick one. It's going to have to be skewering. All right. What do you get when you cross rodeo with skiing? Fucking a hospital bill. Uh, the wild and wacky skewering. Nick Burry, uh, this is from the AP, by the way. Nick Burry clicks into his ski binding, squats to stretch his knees, takes a huge dump, uh, and scans the <laughs> snowy race course. Moments later, he's zipping past a series of gates at high speed, hurtling off j- jumps. But it's not gravity pulling him toward the finish line. It's the brute force of a quarter horse named Sirius. Welcome to skewering, an extreme and quirky winter sport that celebrates the unlikely melding of rodeo and a ski culture in the U.S. Mountain West. Whoa. It's a heart-pumping white-knuckle competition in which horses and sometimes dogs, snowmobiles and even cars, tow skiers by rope at speeds that can top 40 miles per hour over jumps as high as 8 feet. And around obstacles as they try to land suspended hoops with a baton, typically a ski pole that's cut in half. Ooh. Every winter, thousands of people converge on the old mining town of Leadville, Colorado, high in the Rocky Mountains, elevation 10,158 feet, lining downtown's main street, and parking the saloons to street and packing the saloons to witness one of the most popular skewering races in the country. Well, got- hold up, hold up. One of the most popular skewer. How many fucking it's the only one. Yeah, exactly. It's the only one you need. It's got my tip throbbing right now. Yeah. Pretty extreme. Sponsored by Mountain Dew. If you yeah. know anything about my tip, it's hard to get it throbbing. Oh, it's got to be the right this, thing. This Skewering's is pro- one of them. This probably is accurate. It's just, the spectacle build as the granddaddy of them all, which... Yeah, it's probably the first fucking one. Sure, it's the grand. It's, it's, it's the granddaddy the pr- of them all. It's the the best. <laughs> it's the, it's the gra- greatest race in in, oh, in hold existence. Hold the fuck up, though, dude. Game. This has been this has been a tradition there since 1949. Oh, see how the fuck are we just You're talking here? all this shit? <laughs> <laughs> it's been around forever. It's older than any of us. <laughs> it's just the pure adrenaline that gets me to do it. This is and your grandpappy <laughs> sport. <laughs> Pure adrenaline and methamphetamines <laughs> get me pumped. And then getting these two different groups of people together with the riders and the skiers, usually they don't hang out. And getting them together, we mesh pretty well, said Burry, who wears fringe leather pants with his ski gear and a nod to the sports western vibe. You know, My great-grandfather like- one day was out in the field. He was smoked about a pound of meth, and he thought, Wow! I could put on my skis and then slap a rope around that horse's face and <laughs> take off down that hill like a bat out of hell. And there the sport was born. He died. Cardiac arrest. Ski- <laughs> pioneer. A true pioneer. <laughs> a legend. Skewering draws its name from the Norwegian word skewering, meaning ski driving. Skewer. Wait, wait, ski hold, on, hold the fuck up. Hold on. Skewering draws its name from the Norwegian word skewering, spelled exactly the fucking same. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. There's an extra K. That's a, that's hardly a new fucking word. Yeah. I mean, ski driving, it started as a practical mode of transportation in Scandinavia and became popular in the Alps around 1900. Okay, so. It's just transportation there. It's a sport here. Yeah. Yeah. Bigger, <laughs> yeah. badder. <laughs> fucking Norwegian. Fuck, fucking pussies. Yeah. 
Today's sport is inherently dangerous. That's how we get around. And injuries are not uncommon, <laughs> uncommon among riders and skiers alike. Indeed, one of the first riders in the Leadville race earlier this month toppled off his horse and had to be helped off the track as he shook his head in confusion. Murray did well in the competition despite skiing with a separated shoulder from a hard spill during a race two weeks earlier. Mm, mm, mm. Wrong turn! Taking a jump wrong, go down wrong, you can end your season! Then hospital bills rack up, but it's just for the thrill of it, said Burry, a 26-year-old from Meeker, Colorado. God damn, you're gonna try it! <laughs> Breaking my arms, it's worth it, man, when you're out there and it's hitting that powder. <laughs> yeah, and then I go skiing, too. Hit that powder in two different ways. Another skier. Up my nose and the bottom of my skis. My nose <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, did you wipe out there? What do you mean? <laughs> Another skier, Jason Deckard, pulled out of the race at the last minute because he broke his collarbone at a crash during a recent contest. He sometimes wears a protective cup, a valuable lesson learned, after being hit in the groin by a flying chunk of snow flung by a horse's hoof. Flung by a kid on the side. <laughs> God, dude, can you imagine a horse, like, kicking up a snowball? Like, so that, a horse-powered kick snowball to the, to the fucking sack. Where's that video game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, this it comes is, with a bag oh, gotta do a dude, gotta, gotta do a different <laughs> voice, because this is Jason Decker. Hmm, how does Jason Decker sound? It's, like, really slow and, like, <laughs> <laughs> really slow and chill. So, no, wait, uh, he got hit, his balls got hit by a fucking snowball from a horse, so he sounds like, It's not uncommon that my hands are shaking a little bit, even after all this time, because that horse's nose are flaring, and I am not ready to grab a rope that's attached to this saddle, and if I'm not ready to go, then things can be go real bad quickly, said Decker, a 43-year-old engineer from Pagosa Springs, Colorado, who has been skiing since he was two and skewering for 14 you know what years. You reminded me of. Uh, Have you seen that short where the person took a... Uh, CM Punk and uh, Cody Rhodes no. talking to each other in the ring, but they replaced CM Punk's voice with Mickey Mouse and, <laughs> and, Co Goofy. and Cody's with Goofy. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta check it out. Go to your shorts, your YouTube shorts. <laughs> in your shorts. I, dude, I can't wait for, I, I want Goofy to get into public domain because I just want to start having like weird conversations. With, hey, Mickey, you want to go back to my house and practice ritual sex magic? Yeah, make a horror movie like a Wayne Yeah, they already did. I, uh, well, yeah, they've, gr they've, they've greenlit a third one because the second one just came out. The first one was okay. The second one just came out. Yeah. The first one I thought was garbage. And the first one, it, dude, it just didn't go far enough, man. Like there, there's all kinds of cool shit they could have done with it and didn't. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, you should have had a methed out like rabbit. Who was obsessive compulsive, you know, and r real nice but shaky and invites him into his house. And then, like, they spill one fucking thing and he just freaks out and, like, buries him in the carrot patch. It's like, you get! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like that. At first, he should have just been shaking. Ah, you want some tea? Yeah, just leg fucking twitching and shit. <laughs> and then they, like, you know, they place the fort, like, he's feeding him salad or something. They place the fort. Well, maybe down they'll wrong. do it in the third one. Dude, you could have had Al. The gopher could have been blowing shit up. Like, I, I, Missed opportunity. Oh, oh no. Like What'd you do? Well, All right. I well, yeah, we're, 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 of course, I guess I'm going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Why there, that. Maxie? Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, we're done with skewering. There's more. Well, but, eh. Uh, well, hold on. We can do this one if you want. You want to hear about John Hinckley? Go ahead. Let's get one more in. All right. This one's from wavy.com. Yeah, that sounds reputable. Mm -hmm. Williamsburg, only on 10. John Hinckley Jr. released from all federal conditions, wants to perform his folk music. And for those who don't know, that's the guy. That's the attempted hero that, uh, that winged Reagan. <laughs> Fuck Ronald Reagan. To this day. Anyway. To this very day. Yeah, fuck him. Dig him up and hey, f know. dig him up, fuck him, cover him and come, and bury him again. Whoa. You know what? <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to perform. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd be able to perform either. Uh, you know what? Like, 
do some sort of arcane ritual, bring him back from the grave, beat him to death, and then rebury him. There you go. All right. John Hinckley Jr., the man who tried to kill then-President Ronald Reagan, spoke exclusively with WAVY News 10 about his mental illness and how he wants to move on. It's been two years since a judge granted him unconditional release. He had been living under conditional release since 2016 up until 2022. He talked about those conditions and his mental state in 1981. Aw, oh, man. In the very first line, he loses me. Quote, Yes, I'm very sorry. I have tremendous remorse for what I did in 1981, John Hinckley Jr. said. Well, I mean, <laughs> he's just looking at it as he never wanted to attempt to kill anybody. So, No, I, I would regret you know, spending that much time in prison, but not trying to fucking kill Ronald Reagan. Anyway, March 30th, 1981. Reagan came very close to dying, but not close enough. Hinckley shot the... Uh, dude, I'm going to keep hammering on that. I don't care. <laughs> Hinckley, shot the, <laughs> Hinckley shot the president with the bullet coming within an inch of his heart. Three other bullets paralyzed White House Secretary James Brady and wounded Officer Tom... Delanthe and Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy. Yeah, I think I remember reading about that too. He was using like a twenty-two rifle or something. So like, they didn't realize he was even hit because it's how like a twenty-two because his bullet is so small and it was hard. Like a lot of times, people they say people will uh, go into shock or die from it because they don't realize they're shot and then they can't find the entrance wound a lot of times Damn. because it's so small. You know what I mean? Like notice it. It's hard to find and shit. Was that just shot? <laughs> nah. Uh. Let's go with Sizzler. <laughs> you die in the buffet. <laughs> Face down in the, in the back salad the bar. Yeah. <sighs> Those of you who don't know who, what Sizzler is, it was a restaurant. Ah, was that paying? <laughs> was that paying guilt from flooding the inner cities with crack? No, I've been shot. <laughs> <laughs> Impression. What kind of person was Hinkley at twenty-five? Quote, I was a mixed up, confused 25 year old, Hinckley said. I was dropping in and out of college. I was isolated from my family, isolated from God. I was living on my own and not doing well at all. The frame of mind and obsession with actress Jodie Foster led him to shooting Reagan as he left Washington. Makes, Hilton Hotel. Just makes oh, sense. <laughs> Pieces fell together. I mean, I mean, perfectly. <laughs> Oh, God, he's losing me even further. Man, you know, I started off pretty positive about John Hinckley. You know? Well, let's go into he's wanting to make thought, folk music now. <laughs> Hold on. I always thought he was a great man, Hinckley said. It was all just a delusional thing. Well, okay, yeah, it was a delusional thing that you thought he was a great man. I had going on in my head that led me to President Reagan. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity and spent the next 34 years in a Washington, D.C. psychiatric hospital attending numerous therapy sessions and taking prescribed medication. I had a lot of therapy, Hinckley said. I had a lot of time outside on the grounds. I, de I developed a cat quality at the hospital when I was out on my grounds privileges. I took care of a lot of cats, and they helped me get through my day. To this day, I hate Mondays. Thank you, Garfield. He was released in 2016 under condition that he lived with his mother in Williamsburg, perform volunteer work, and record any browser and record any browser history on his computer. Over time, the court granted him more freedom. Oh, I know what his browser history was like. Cats. J cats. Jody Foster. <laughs> Titties. Jody Foster holding cat. Cats holding Jody Foster. <laughs> Jody Foster grooming cats. Jody. Cats grooming Jody Foster. <laughs> Jody Foster as a cat. <laughs> Jody Foster in cats. <laughs> Jody Foster riding a cat. What hole cut? <laughs> From 2003. Jody Foster looking at cats. <laughs> Jody Foster searching for cats on the internet. <laughs> Jody Foster feeding cats. Jody Foster. <laughs> cats nursing Jody Foster. <laughs> Jody Foster, Jody Foster nursing cats. <laughs> <laughs> Jody Foster cleaning litter boxes for cats. Jody Foster using litter boxes for cats. Jody Foster furry costume. A cat in a horse. Cat in Jody Foster costume. <laughs> Cat Jody Foster cosplay. Unidentified hair, possibly cat Jody Foster mixture. 
Jodie Foster cosplaying as Cat, cosplaying as Jodie Foster. <laughs> Nutella recipes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Yeah. From 2003 until 2016, I was getting incremental steps out of the hospital, Ankley said. Three days, five days, seven days, so I was getting acclimated as the years went on. But now Hinkley wants to move on from his past and ask the biggest, ask the big, biggest of all, can you forgive me? I don't dwell on the past. I try not to, Hinkley said. I mean, I rarely even think about the person I was back then because it's such a depressing scene. But I just try to stay in the here and now. Doctors who evaluated him testified in 2022 that Hinckley was no longer a violent threat. He believes that he believes that is reason enough why he should be able to perform the music he says he loves to create. Though Hinckley has not mandated to take any form of medication anymore, he said he still takes it daily because he feels it helps. And the man who took aim at Reagan nearly 43 years ago is setting his sights on a music career. I'm living in Williamsburg and I've got a good life, Hinckley said. I take care of my cat. I take care of myself. I don't bother anybody, except Jody Foster, and I'm just a good neighbor, I believe. Remorseful for what he's done, he's eager to do what he's loved doing since youth, <laughs> shooting at presidents. Inspired by the Beatles coming to America, he bought a guitar and has been writing songs ever since he was 10. He claims he's a different person than he was at 25 when he came close to killing Reagan. I tell people if they want to get to know me, listen to my songs, Hinkley said. Should they forgive him? I hope they will, Hinkley said. I have a lot of people who write to me and say listening to my songs help them get through get through their day. And I think that's a very nice thing for them to say. And that makes me keep going on with my songwriting. Streaming mu hey, you can listen to it on Spotify. Streaming music on Spotify, YouTube, and iTunes. He's accumulated a following. He also sells paintings of his cat on eBay. Of course. <laughs> I got one where my it's my cat it's Jody Foster's head on my cat's body. <laughs> It's my favorite. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, I painted that one with my own DNA. <laughs> nice. A little piece of me in there. <laughs> and it's just enough income, he said, to pay his bills. But he'd like to perform publicly. He's booked a few venues, some sold out shows, but all have been canceled, security being the main issue after one hotel was threatened. But he said he'll carry on even if he can't perform face to face with those who appreciate his lyrics. Yes, if I never do a gig ever, Hinkley said, I will still be writing my songs and putting them out there for people to hear. I didn't mean to shoot them. <laughs> I was going through some things. Just say no to shooting the president. <laughs> say yes to Jody Foster Cat. <laughs> Every song is just about. <laughs> All of that. Every time. Taxi driver, change me. <laughs> <laughs> Phew. Yeah. All right, yeah, boys. Huh? I am done with articles. <laughs> that was a doozy. Yeah. It was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was good. We're at a little over an hour. So. Oh, wow. We did nothing but stories this yeah. time. That's pretty good. So, I guess we can end it. Maybe we can shoot for three episodes this month. That'd be cool. No promises. We'll try to. Michael, we'd like you to join us again, if you're able. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's episode 12. I'll do it. Of the horse lick. Poo, poo. I mean. Live, laugh, love, Jodie Foster cat. <laughs> I'm going to go look up some pictures of Jodie Foster now. Yeah, make some AI. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Mid-journey, oh. here come. <laughs> All right. oh, I can't wait to see her nursing those cats. <laughs>